Are in Bogonia Exota. Are you chapter 14? Thank you, Lord. Are you a Bale Mola Otua Oves? Eleven. Are you there? Did you find it? Can I read? Thank you. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Verse 13. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Can we pray? Father, thank you for your awesome, wonderful word. In Jesus' name, amen. I have titled the message of today, be still. Be still. Ke go pela wa ibala ka sepedi. Ke ibale. Ba bolela le moshe ba re. Na kwa e gepita o be o sina mabetla na. Ge o re khudusheditse o khwela mo Dilo tse o di dirile ka le bakalang wa re ntsha e gepeta. Na se tsona tse re go boditse go tsona re sa le e gepeta ra re. Re le se re hlanghele ba e gepeta. Ka o ba ne go khwela le shokeng a o wa. Ho ka be go le ka one re le bahlanka ba ba e gepeta. Mo sha fetola bo tsa sechaba re. Le se bo ife. E mang. Le gone ke mo le tlo go bona pholosho ya morena a tlo le direla le gono. Ka o bane ba e gepita ba le ba bona go le gono. Le ka se ke lahlwa le ba bona gape ning le ning. Morena o tlo le hlabanela. Lena le khumoletse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Ikumulele. Be still. Be quiet. Don't answer. Don't respond. Don't take action. Don't do anything. Just be still. As a child of God, you must take a stand. To be still mean, you have to be standing somewhere. To be still mean, you must be firm. Know your things. To be still mean, you must be confident. Hmm? To be still mean, au chuche chuki silo, au makali silo. There is nothing that makes you to fear. There is nothing that makes you to wonder, to be amazed. Why? Because you understand 
what's going on. What you have to do is to be still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we have read today, the scripture reading of today says, there were children of Israel. Children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. It has been 400 years when they were serving under the Egyptians. Why? Because they went there during the time of hunger and when they reached there, they multiplied and became a nation. Now when they were there as a nation, they were always crying. Why? Because of the load of the, of the Egyptians upon them. The work was too much for them. And they started crying. The only thing that they knew by then was that there is a God of Abraham. There is a God of Jacob. There is a God of our father Isaac. And nothing more and nothing less. Now, when time came for them to be taken out of Egypt, remember, these people were having a problem of the workload of the Egyptians. They were serving as slaves. Negosina freedom. Negosina democracy. And as they were there, when they were serving the Egyptians, they started crying unto the God whom they know. But the problem is, they were crying. Though they were crying, food was there. Though they were crying, enjoyment was there. Though they were crying, graves were there. Though they were crying, what they needed were there. Even though what they needed and what they were crying for didn't came at the appointed or the right time. But still they do came. But not at the right time. In other words, if you were supposed to go to the farm to work, you will work from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock or whatever. I'm just giving an example. When you come back, you'll be very much, very, 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 very tired. Now, the issue is you will reach at home, reach there and eat food. But the food won't be delicious and satisfying. Why? Because you are tired. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when Moses reached them, he came with the word. He came with a prophecy. He came with authority from heaven. He came being sent by God the Father from heaven. He said to Moses, I have heard the cries of my children of Israel in Egypt. And now I have came to deliver them. Now when I reached there, what is it that I have to say? And God said to him, when you reach there, tell them I am the I am. And Moses said, they will ask me, how do we know that I am the I am sent to you? And God said, what is it that you have in your hand? And he said, I have my sins. He put it down. He changed to be a snake. And the Bible says, Moses ran away from the snake. And after that, God said, pick it up. He picked it up and he went away and he went there. He knew that I'm speaking with a God that can. When Moses turned from where? From Horeb. Nana Lisiwiti. He knew what he was going to do. He was going to convince the Israelites that I am, that I am, send me to come and fetch you from Egypt so that you can go to the promised land. So when Moses reached there, he explained to him, told them everything 
told everything what he has seen in the mountain of Horeb, told everything that God has showed him, did everything that God commanded him until the time came that he took the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now, when we were born again, when we were saved, we were saved with our troubles. Am I right? We were saved with our problems. Am I saying the truth? We were saved with our diseases. We were saved with all these problems that each and every one on earth has them. We were saved, we don't have jobs. When we were saved, things are not going the way we were thinking. When we were saved, there is a delay in our lives. There is no breakthrough. There is no deliverance. Nothing, nothing at all is going our way or going according to what we are thinking. But we are saved. We have been taken from Egypt. And where are we going? To Canaan. But... Now, along the way on the road, I want you to understand this issue that I'm talking about. Along the way on the road, they met a sea called the Red Sea. Hallelujah. A boat was needed for them to cross over. Something good was needed for them to find us themselves on the other side. But remember, God is the one who said what? Move out of Egypt. Don't use that other road that will take a few days. If you can go into the Bible. Go this road that will take longer. So that on the road, these people that were living in Egypt will be finished. How Are you getting what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now God knew that along the way, these people are going to meet the Red Sea. God knew that along the way when you are going to meet this problem. God knew that along the way in your salvation, you are going to meet cancer. God knew that along the way when you are still born again, when you are still enjoying in your faith, when you are still enjoying your salvation, you are going to meet disappointment. He knew. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? He knew. He knew that the rest was there. And then train Hatlang, the thing that makes me happy. God even has an answer for the Red Sea. The problem is we don't know that God has an answer. Huh? Can you ask the person that is close to you? Do you know that God has an answer? When they reached the Red Sea, where we have started reading by verse 11, that's where the issue was starting. They went to Moroti and Mamoroti. You told us when we are born again, we will go to a land of milk and honey. You told us when we are born again, that we will never be sick again. You told us when we are born again, that we will have jobs, we will have whatever we want. You told us when we are born again, that we will have our jobs. You told us that when we are born again, we will be married. You told us that when we are born again, we will have cars, we will get houses, we will have whatever that we want because Christ died for us. Yes, it is. It is. They went to Moses and said, Amongst all things, they only think of graves. 
Kante repita no sina mabita. We don't know graves in in Egypt. We are going to die and be buried at least. Not that we die here in the desert. We told you as we were moving out. Moses, where are you taking us? And Moses said, I'm taking you to the promised land where our heavenly father told me to take you. And I believe we are going to reach there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as they were arguing and wondering and worrying, can you ask the person that is close to you, are you not worrying? Are you not talking too much? Are you not speaking blasphemy? Are you not insulting God? Where is that job that God told me about? Where is that marriage that I was promised two years ago? You know, I came to Charis and somebody prophesied over me and say, hey, hey, I'll get a job, but this job hasn't come. The problem is not the prophecy. The problem is you because you don't believe. As long as the prophecy has been said in truth, it will stand. Moses, we were enjoying ourselves in Egypt. These are the same people. Because of the heavy load of the Egyptians. Crying day in and day out to the Lord God of Abraham. Can't you save us from this problem? Now the time of salvation has reached them. They are the ones now who are reminding Moses, we do have graves back there. We can be buried. Even though we were suffering, but we were having food. Even though we were suffering, but we were not walking such a long distance. Even when we were suffering, but we still have something to show and something to speak about. But these people are the ones that were crying to God Almighty. Telling God about their problems. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love Moses. He said, when we read in verse 13, be still. Tell the person that is close to you, be still. Be firm. Tell the person that is close to you, be firm. Be confident. Have a stand. Know where you are going. And Moses went on and said, be still and see the salvation, the deliverance that God is going to show you today. And he went on and said to them, the Egyptians, this problem, this disease huh, that you are having today, you will never ever see it again. But what you have to do, be still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses said, be still and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. And he went on and said, the Egyptians that you are seeing today, matata wa bonang lichonu wanapapa, The unemployment problem that you have today. Those cases that people are always throwing at you all the days. Every day when you sleep, when you wake up, cases upon your life. The attacks that you are meeting each and every day of our life. Moses said there in the word of God in the Bible. You will never... Never 
never see them again. And he ends up by saying forever. Why did Moses say this way? Today, we are at the sea. We are at the Red Sea. Can you tell the person that is close to you? We are standing at the Red Sea. The minute we cross over, it's away with the Egyptians. It's no more with the Egyptians. It's done with the Egyptians. We forget about what they do. We forget about what they say. We forget about the, what they were imposing upon us. Why? Because we are going to cross over. Manjebe kunenkinga. How are we going to do that? They started to pray in tongues. But the river, the sea stays there. But you are saved. The sea is still there. Some started jumping up and down, doing enchantments like they are inyangas, they are sangomas, but the sea still remains. This sea, that was before the Israelites, they want supernatural anointing to move. Can you tell the person that is close to you? This sea that you are seeing wants supernatural powers so that it can move. Huh? You know, the Egyptians grumbled and grumbled and grumbled. And I love the God that I serve. He said to Moses, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Lift it up towards the sea. And Moses did exactly what he was told. And my Bible tells me and say, as he was lifting up his rod, the sea parted ways. The other water went to the left, the other went to the right, and there was a freeway, there was a highway, there was a road where cars can also enter, people can enter. They were starting to walk, walking on dry ground, walking on dry land, whereas there was a sea before. Let me tell you one of Papa, where you are here today, it's a holy ground. You are going to cross over the sea that is before you. You will never see again the Egyptians before you. You will never see them again. The trouble before you. You will never see it again. The disease that is in you, you will never, never see again. I wonder I never heard Moses say, I'm not saying what, they, what other people are doing is wrong. This was a time of supernatural power to be visible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when they were there, when they were still standing, I believe there were some amongst the Israelites who were saying, and then, what is he doing? He always do like this. Always when we have problems, he just do like this. This is what he's going to do. Hey, Moshe, answer us all. Oh, we are asking you questions. You must answer. The Egyptians are coming. We are seeing. Their horses, we are seeing. Their cars coming towards us. Do something or else we die. So now when you are a shepherd who does not know where you are coming from or where you are going, Baruti, we are Tatiwa Namuwe. What you have to do is so simple. In Jesus' name, I've done my job. God will do his own. 
I don't care whether you are healed, whether you are not healed, whether you are delivered, whether you are not delivered. I am not the healer. I'm just an instrument to heal. I am not the deliverer. I'm just being used to deliver. Now, people today, they are fighting for things they don't know. I want to be known that yes, Mrs. Makananisa, when he prays for you, you must fall. When he speaks to you, you must go around. When you do this, you must do this. Eh, eh, I am not the one who is doing it, but God himself doing it. I don't care. Moses here, when he was standing by the sea, he didn't care. I believe the horses were running. When they were standing, maybe they were hearing the footsteps of the horses coming, the footsteps of the Egyptians coming. They were standing, others were going there. Others were going in there. Our people like us were starting to pray. Mozemua Israel. Mozemua Abraham. Mozemua Jacob. Bakombanana. God was seeing them. When they were there, Moses lifted the rod and the sea parted. The Bible says the children of Israel walked on dry land. I don't know how this water parted. I don't know why the ground was dry same time. But the Bible says they walked on dry land and they crossed over to the other side. Ashiba uweba lo ibayata. Ashiba uweba hot ibaya fit. There they come with their horses. Oh, I love my God. You know, my God won't stop you. My God will leave you to insult me. My God will leave you to throw cases on me. My God will leave you and you do whatever you want on me. But when the day comes, he doesn't stop you from doing what you're doing. The dry ground was for children of Israel only and nobody else. When they reached there, because themselves they were thinking, we will find them at the sea because there is no road, there is no way they can pass. So now when they reached there, they found a freeway big as N1. And everyone was walking freely. They were running, going to the other side. When the Egyptians reached there, when they see the freeway, the road, that has been opened by the God that they don't even know. Just because they don't know this God. Just because they don't understand his powers. Just because they don't understand who he is. The Israelites were able to pass there. Why? Because they knew he was, I am who I am. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is, do you know I am who I am? This was telling the Israelites, when you meet anything, don't, don't be scared. Now I will do my things. I will do whatever I know that I have to do. But you, be still. The children of Israel passed. When the Israel reached there, they saw an open road. And looked, they found at the far side, the children of Israel are passing over. They are reaching to the other side. Maybe they spoke to each other. Mam Sebelezi, when I'm Hotiaka, a skim sum, little in inside they went. The Bible says, as they were walking with their horses, as they were riding in their cars, when they reached the middle of the sea, when everybody and every one of the Egyptians was inside the sea, the water came back like there was a wind that was blowing the water. <laughs> They don't even ask themselves who opened a way in this sea. Huh? They don't even ask themselves who has healed this person 
from this HIV. They don't even ask themselves who has saved or healed this person from this high blood pressure. You cannot find something standing and just get inside. You will be in trouble. Can you tell the person that is close to you? The enemy is in trouble. When they entered there, they said, hey, our slaves, we got them. We are going to take them back to where they belong. We are going to take them back to Egypt where we stay. We are going to take them back to Egypt. They are going to work for us. And when they will reach there, we are going to increase their load of work. So that even in the days to come, they must never think of escaping from Egyptians. Little did they know that this is Jehovah, the Lord of heaven and earth, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, Jehovah Sivawote. When he speaks, the heavens shakes. When he directs, there's nobody that can stop. When he says yes, nobody can say no. When they reach there, they enter with their cars, with their chariots, the Bible says so, and their horses, and those who were upon on top of the horses. Pere is drawing a chariot, chariot, even drivers and even passengers. With the AK 47s, if they were there, with their uh, 48 special, with their everything, they were there with them. With the best muti they have, it was there. The best gods they know, it was there with them. You cannot come out and say, I'm going for war, and you don't take things that you trust. Am I right? So it means the Egyptians took everything. Their gods, their guns, or their spears, their shields, their uniform. Eh, their mutis, their idols, their everything. They were with them. Someone when he was right, so that the Israelites can go back. I'm hearing the word of the Lord saying, they were trying to catch the uncatchable. They were trying to hold the unholdable. They were trying to take back the untaken back. They were trying to destroy the undestroyable. They were trying to do the things that they don't understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, be still. It's time to cross over. Be still. It's time to go to the other side. The Bible says the Egyptians entered. The word that Moses spoke came to pass. The Egyptians that they've been seeing for 400 years, they never saw them again forever anymore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to prophesy over your life today. Yeah. I want to tell you something today. Yeah. Be still. Be still. Yeah. Be still. Yeah. God knows where you are going. Yeah. God has a plan of where you are going. Yeah. God knows your destiny. Yeah. There is nothing that will stop you as you are walking this way that God has opened for you. You didn't open the way for yourself. He did it for you. Yeah. When Christ died on, at Calvary, Dying for our sins. A road was open for us. A road called salvation. You just choose to get in. 
or you don't get in. So now in this road that we are walking in, going to heaven, they were from Egypt going to Canaan. We are so from South Africa going to heaven. Eh? Can you ask somebody close to you, where are you going? Eh? Where are you going? I am from South Africa. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Now, Psalm 37 verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not worry when people succeed. In their own ways. Eh? Be still before the Lord. Wait. Later. Patiently for him. Do not worry. Do not fret. When people succeed in their own ways. Because you don't go according to your own ways. You go according to the way of God. You don't move in your own ways. You move in the way of God. You don't do things according to your own ways. You do things according to the way of God. You don't move according to your only uh, thinking or your, 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 your understanding. You walk according to the understanding and the thinking of God. That is why the Bible says he's able to do abundantly above what we think. Abundantly above what we ask. Abundantly above what you perceive. Abundantly above what you're thinking right now. Abundantly above what you're planning right now. Why? Because he's the one who opened a way for you. Let me tell you, child of God, this is a time of crossing over. This is a time of walking on dry land. This is a time where we will never see our enemies again. Never. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we have read in the book of Psalm, it says, be still and wait. Eish. Can you tell the person that is close to your problem? Wait. Wait. And it went on and say, patiently. Wait patiently. Lita. Wait, you are going to reach there. Wait, you are going to be healed. Though. Wait, your job will come. Wait, breakthrough will come to you. Wait, what you are crying for will reach you. Wait, that car you are searching for, Papa, is coming. Wait. The Bible says, don't go about them when they succeed on their own ways. Why? Because we succeed according to the way of God. If the Israelites reach there at the sea and start to defy his ways to, enter, to cross over the Red Sea, I believe we're not supposed to, supposed to be speaking about them today. They were supposed to be dead. Huh? But because it was God who said they must go out, that is why there was a way for them to walk. That is why it was easy for them to cross over. That is why it was easy for them to reach their destiny. That is why it was easy for them to get whatever they wanted. Why? Because it was God who was directing their way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalm chapter 46 verse 10, the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, be still and know that he is God. And he said, I will be exalted among nations. 
and I will be exalted in the earth. Hmm. I will be exalted among nations, says the Lord. And he said, I will be exalted in all the earth, says the Lord. How is the Lord going to be exalted? When the wives of the soldiers of the Egyptians waited and waited, brothers and sisters waited and waited for days, waited, they one, waited, they two, day three, day four, day five, day six, seven, from a week, a month, from a month, a year, from a year, two years, three years, four years. I believe they started saying, what could have happened to them? But the Bible says, after what happened, happened. Their bodies were found lying on the shores of the sea. I believe the Egyptians started saying, I am afraid of the God of the Israelites. I am afraid of the God of these people. I am afraid of the God of Charis. I am afraid of what the God of this people is doing. I am afraid, I am afraid, I am afraid because why? The people whom they were trusting never came back home alive. Now this is a time of trusting in God. This is a time of keeping quiet. This is a time of standing still. This is a time of being still. Can you tell the person that is close to you, be still. Wait patiently. God wants to be exalted through you. God wants to be known through you. God wants everybody to know that there is God through you. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to God want him to be, want to be known through you? Yes, there are problems that we are meeting. Many of us here who are here today, we have problems. Hmm? We have what? Problems. Some of us, we don't even know how we are going to solve them. They are unsolvable. Some of us, we have diseases. And these diseases, they told us, they are unhealable. Huh? We've got problems even when we go to consult those they call the psychologists. When they, we reach there, they said they don't understand. When we go to people to find advices, they say, I've never met such kind of a, of a problem before. What you are meeting is above my understanding. What you are meeting is above my educational capacity and educational criteria. Eh? When you go to people to explain to them, just to tell them what you are meeting, they tell you, they only tell you, this is not normal. And when you ask them, what is it that I have to do? They say, they don't know. What they are able to do only is to confuse you. It's not normal. Eh? How many times have you heard this word? It's not normal. A thousand times. A million times. Why? Because people don't understand the stage that we are standing on. They don't understand the things 
that you are meeting. They don't understand the disease that you are having. They don't understand what you are meeting along the way. They don't understand the things that are starting to develop in your life right now. But today I'm here standing as a servant of God Almighty. I have a solution of the problem that you are having today. I am holding a solution of what you are having today. I have an answer to your problem today. I have an answer to that disease today. I have an answer to that thing that is stopping you from your progress today. I have an answer towards that attack today. I have an answer of whatever that is happening in you today. When God descends, what is not of God must run. And when God speaks, everything that is not supposed to be must give way. You don't know the God that we are serving. Isulu malpagama. Lita duru li chitakuwa li chimanga mirenji. When the heaven stood up, or when the heaven stands, everything must shake. Your disease must shake. Your problem must shake. Your instability must shake. Your not having promotion must stand, must shake. The ground that has been built before you must shake. The wall before you must crack. It must shake. Let us read the last verse. Let us go and read it. Mark chapter 4. 35 to 39. I'm finishing. Mareka 4. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mareka 4. Are you there? Can you tell the person that is close to you it's time to cross over? But you must be still. Be still. And know that he is God. 35. I'm just sitting from verse 35 just to make you understand. I want to speak about verse 39, but let's start from 35. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. In other words, that joined him along the way. And he says, a furious squall or storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly shrimped or taken away. Jesus was in the stern or in the lower floor of the boat. Sleeping on a cushion. The disciples warm, woke him up. Said to him. Teacher. Don't you care if we drown? 39. He got up. Rebuked the wind. And said to the waves. Quiet. Be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a typical example of the things that we are meeting today. Along the road in our marriages, there are storms. 
Along the road in our workplaces, there are storms. Along the road in our everyday lives, there are storms. Some of us, we are already tired of what is happening. Some of us, we don't even know what to do next. Some of us, we don't even understand where to go again. Why? Because this storm is so tedious, it's so strong. It's even breaking into your understanding and your knowledge. You know, Baba Mubari Naina, these problems that we are meeting each and every day, we can even say, I don't even know how to think. I cannot think anymore. Why? Because the storm is now breaking into your comfort zone. The problem now is inside your comfort zone. The problem now is dealing with you, 9-9. Nine, nine. But I, what I want us to look at right now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I want us to look at right now through the word that we have read from the Bible. When they crossed over, when they went into the boat, when they took the journey, it was not themselves who started the journey. There was somebody who started this journey. And this person who started the journey was Jesus. Because he knew that we were, we were going or they were going to reach where they were going. The Bible says he went down to the lower floor and put his head on the pillow and did what? Slept. Be still. Everything is in order. He slept. Then when the wind started, when the problem started, when the problem started to get inside their comfort zone, when the problem started to get inside where they were, when water was starting to enter into the boat, when water was entering into the ship that they were in, they started to remember that it's not ourselves who started the journey, but there's somebody who started the journey. And the person who started the journey, when they reached where Jesus was, they said to him, can't you care? Do you know why Jesus was not caring? He was the one who ordered the journey. And he knows that God is with him. And he knows that when he started something, we'll finish it. And he knows that he was going to reach his destiny. The problem of the, the disciples, they didn't know that whatever that Jesus says must be accomplished. That was their problem. If you can go to verse 40, it says, Where is your faith? Because I'm the one who said we are crossing over. So why do you worry? Because I'm the one who started everything. It means I will make sure that we reach where we are going. says he woke up. In New King's version said, it says, he woke up and stood there and he said, peace, be still. When he woke up, he stood there. He didn't answer them first. He went there to command the situation. After commanding the situation, he comes back to them. And say, where is your faith? The word of the Lord says, when he commanded, be still. Everything was quiet. Everything was back to normal. Everything was happening the way it's supposed to happen. Everything was working the way it was supposed to be working. Everyone was doing the job he was supposed to be doing. Everybody was doing accordingly to the way he was supposed to do when they are taking a journey to somewhere. 
But now because of their unbelief and the doubt in their heart, they didn't know that they were going to reach where they were going. Now because of the unbelief and the doubt that has filled our heart, we don't even understand and know. We don't have even the truth in our hearts to understand that whomever started this way of salvation will make us to go through and we will pass in Jesus' name. What is it that you are coming across in your life today? Can you ask the person that is close to you? I just know but a few. I don't know much. But I can mention a few. The ladies here who are barren, they're crying for children. The people here who are searching for jobs. Others are searching for promotions. Others are searching for money. Others are searching for breakthrough. Others have delays in their lives. Things are not going the way they are supposed to go. Others, you know, when they sleep, they are given food in their dreams. Others, you know, they have spiritual husbands. Others have attacks, spiritual attacks during the night. Others, they couldn't even think and focus when they are doing things. Others, when they want to do this, they find themselves doing the other thing. Others, you know, they don't even know which road to take to so that they can reach where they are thinking they want to reach in life. They end up taking the wrong way. There is only one way. Oh. Can you tell somebody that is close to you? There is only one way. The author and the finisher of the way. There is only one way to go through. The one who started the journey. There is only one way for you to succeed. The one who said it is done. There is only one way you can succeed. The one who said by his stripes we are healed. There is only one, one way to succeed. The one who said he has carried our burdens, he has carried everything that is heavy on our shoulders. The one who said that he will be with us until the end of time. He is the only one that can do it for us and nobody else. Sometimes when we want things, we pepele that too much. We talk too much. Can you talk to the person that is close to you? Be still. For God is here. Be still. For he knows what you want. Be still. For he knows your destiny. Be still. Because he's going to take you there. Be still. For you're going to reach where you want today. Be still. For you're going to have whatever you're crying for today. Be still, for you're going to have whatever you're praying for today. What is it that you want? When the Bible says be still, it means about something like this. Can you come and walk in front of me? Just walk and go away. Nagino shalom ra. Thank you. Hallelujah. That be still. That is be still. You don't ask questions or you don't make yourself feel. You don't show yourself that you are clever on top of others. You don't show yourself that is the answer to everything. If you are sick, you papa humula. If you have a problem, humula. If things are not going your way, humula. Be still. When they are laughing at you, humula. Be still. And know that he is God. I love to say these words. You will reap. Whatever you saw. It may be today. It may be tomorrow. It may be 10 years to come. 20 years to come. You will reap. I'm not the one who made time. I'm not the one who plays time. God is the one who knows. But Oksala Yozenzani. Uzofuna. 
at the end of it. So watch your ways. Watch what you say. Watch your doings. Watch your actions. It's better to be still and wait for God to speak. It's better to be still and wait for God to act. It's better to be still and wait for the go ahead from the Lord. It's better to be still and wait for God to say something. It's better to be still. It's better. We said when we started following God, God, I will follow you. Wherever you go, I will follow you. When you lead, I will follow. So then let's do it. Let's follow him. But when we follow him, we don't ask, where are we going? Huh? Kuni ini nko siya mangilindile. For this long, long, long time I've been waiting. Waiting for what? God knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? God knows your problem. And he's going to calm it down today. God knows where you are coming from. And he's going to calm it down today. God knows your situation. He's going to calm me down today. God knows where you're coming from. He's going to calm me down today. If you believe it, say hallelujah. He knows. He knows. Let your will be done, Papa. As it is done in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation. Today, I pray before you, for you, your destiny, where you are going, what you want, what you are cramming for, what you have been screaming and shouting for, must come to you today in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter for how long. I love God because when he raises, when he raises, look at what happened to the Egyptians. The Bible says in the morning, the bodies of the Egyptians were found on the shores. In other words, this sea took out their bodies and threw them out. Because the sea didn't want to stay with dead inside of it. I get it? So now, when we are walking the way of righteousness, the way of truth, the way of heaven, let us be still and know that he is God. And know that he will fight for us. And know that he will speak for us. And know that he will direct us. No matter how stupid you look, no matter how foolish you look, some of us, we think we are not even wise. Let me tell you, it doesn't go about your wisdom. It doesn't go about your understanding. It doesn't go about how educated you. It doesn't go where you were born. It doesn't go about what you think. It goes about, are you still in the presence of the Lord God Almighty? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you still? Are you quiet? Are you standing? Are you firm? Are you not confused? Do you know where you are going? Do you know who saved you? Do you know he can do it for you today? It is a very easy task. To lawazi. Gigungkulungkulu. Be still. And know. That I am God. I am finishing. I want us to go and pray. You have heard the word of the Lord speaking. Can you ask the person that is close to you, can you be still? Hey. Ask again, can you be still? You become quiet. 
Says you need. Bago tell you just become quiet. Bago beg aga ubi just become quiet. Laughing at you, you just become quiet. You don't even answer. Hmm? Can you tell the person that is close? You don't even answer. Uno humula tu. You are just still. You stand like a pole. A pole does not have a mouth. A pole does not have eyes and ears. You don't do anything. You just stand there. And say I'm waiting patiently. Upon my savior. I know my redeemer liveth. I know he will answer me. I know he is faithful. I know he said he will heal me. I know he said he will carry my burden. I know he said he will walk me through thick and thin. I know he said he will never leave nor forsake me. I know he said he will be with me until the end of time. Lord, I'm still waiting patiently. Yarabasi Terebeshia. Can you ask the person that is close to you? Are you waiting patiently? Are you not doing things the way people are doing outside? Are you not following the ways of those that are outside? Are you not admiring the things that they are having? Are you not admiring the things that they are, they are taking or that they are fetching from wherever they are fetching them? Are you not admiring the things that I'm being blessed with? Be still. And know that we serve a God. Be still and know that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Be still and know that he knows about your situation. Be still and know that he knows about what you are meeting along the way. He knows that you have been rejected. He knows that people don't even talk to you. He knows that people don't even care about where you are going or what is happening to you. You know they don't even come to visit you. You know they don't even think about you. You know they don't even care whether you live or whether you die. But can you wait and be still before the Lord? Can you allow the Lord God Almighty to answer for you? Can you allow him to solve your problems? Can you allow him to be the one who fights on your behalf? The one who talks on your behalf? The one who says something on your behalf? When you're going to that job interview, I said to you last week, when you reach there, you don't speak to anybody. You don't ask anybody, what is it that you want? You go and sit there on the bench and focus and be still. And in your heart, you said, Father, I'm here. And I know you are the one who's going to speak for me. When you reach that hospital, when you are sitting there on that chair, you don't ask somebody who's next to you. When out the if you know what you do, you sit there and you relax and you become still before the Lord God Almighty and you focus on what you are there for and you ask yourself in your heart father I am here today can you change these machines of this hospital can you do it for me you know my life depends on the results that I'm going to get today I've heard a lot of people saying so mama my life depends on what is going to happen tomorrow then I have an answer for you today. Can you be still before the Lord? Can you be still and allow the Lord to speak? Can you be still and allow the Lord to direct? Can you be still and allow the Lord God Almighty to speak on your behalf? Can you be still and allow the Lord God Almighty to work in you? Some diseases here, they don't even need the prayer of the apostle or the apostolates. They need you to be still, quiet. Huh? Some other things that you are meeting don't need anybody. They need you to be still before God. Trust in him. Believe in him. Trust that he can do it for you. Tell yourself if he has done it for the Israelites, he can do it for me. 
If Jesus has calmed the waters when they were entering inside the boat, it means he can also do it for me and tell my situation to stop right today. Are we ready? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to cross over? Are you ready to cross over?